Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where John and I are with Bill Jordan, our favorite philosopher. Hey, Bill, good to see you. Bill, I've good got a, uh, a, I want to raise a, a sore topic, a subject that's uh, mm. very sad. Uh, did you see the fact that Jimmy Buffett died? I, I think a better question, uh, if I may, is did anybody not see that Jimmy Buffett passed? I don't think there has been a celebrity death or passing in recent memory or any memory that I can recall that has so permeated yeah. social media, yeah. Twitter, yeah. Facebook, Instagram, people posting memories, interviews, songs. The guy invented a lifestyle. He invented a total niche or niche or whatever you want to call it. Uh, for that music back in the early 70s. Yep. In fact, I mean, I was doing radio, and I got into radio in 1973. In early 1974, he released the song Come Monday. Yes. And yeah. I, I loved it then. And then I had a buddy who, we'd go out and play tennis, go back to his apartment, he'd put on Jimmy Buffett albums. I didn't hear, I'd never, I'd only heard Come Monday. And I fell in love with this pirate looks at 40 and, uh, trying to reason with hurricane season and all. Anyway, so I've loved the guy for 50 years. I've seen him more more times in concert than I can count. I've never met him. I interviewed him by phone once. And you know what they say? Be careful of meeting your heroes. Oh, because yeah. I thought, I thought, okay, this is, you know, I, I hope it goes well. But I, I thought he was going to have a bit of an attitude. He did not. He was. Yeah, I, think, I, I, so, think, I think one of the reasons why, uh, as you said, uh, uh, it was. Uh, uh, it's just been all over the place. Is that he's one of the few people that I've never known a controversy about, ever. He's just always, you know, uh, having a drink or a good time or saying something nice yes. to somebody or or making somebody feel good, you know, through his songs. Uh, oh, right here, writing songs for others. Um, mm -hmm. You know, inviting them on tour. You know, have, hey, how about you open for me this time? Or oh, just call a club if he's in town. Hey, can I come down and play a couple of songs? Mm -hmm. He just seemed like a regular guy. And uh, when we talked to him uh, by phone, it was he was sound like he was eating something. I said, well, you know, you know cheeseburgers, things. Actually, I'm 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 sipping on a smoothie. I said, a smoothie? <laughs> You're drinking a smoothie? He said, what did you think? He says. If you'd had as many margaritas bought for you as I've had bought for me over the years, you'd be <laughs> drinking a smoothie too. And he had just come in from a bike ride and he was just so, again, he was just a fun, sounded like he'd be a great guy just to sit and have dinner with and chat. Yeah. And I think he would come across totally unaffected as to how huge he was. But, you know, he, he was an excellent businessman. To where, really? oh, well, I mean, he's got the Margaritaville uh, resorts. He's got like Margaritaville retirement centers now, restaurants. He's got Margaritaville or, you know, it's a Caribbean soul stamped on everything from t shirts to flip flops. Uh, he is a marketing machine, was a marketing yeah. machine. And, uh, you know, what he did with all that money, I'm sure I'll bet you it was a bunch of good stuff. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Well, you know, I think the important thing is that he really represented the innermost, I don't know if it's dreams, but you know, our, what, we, what we think we are inside. We're, we're on the beach, we're kicking back. We're the Margaritaville generation. He represented yeah. that not only for baby boomers, but for really generations to come. And there, no it was question. his music, they just connected. Yeah, and, and you know, part of that is because it did start with the baby boomers. It did start in the early 70s with him. And then, you know, in 77, he had a hit with uh, Margaritaville, which is huge. Uh, surprisingly, it's not, it's probably one of my least favorite songs of his now because I just played it so much on, on the radio. I just kind of don't want to say I'm sick of it, but if it comes up and it's in a queue of a, a Jimmy Buffett shuffle, I, I'd go right by it. But he was, you know, People of my age, so early 70s, if you were into Jimmy Buffett, then as we tend to do, as you raise your kids, you raise them on the music you love. So our daughter knows Jimmy Buffett forwards yeah. and backwards. And her kids, my grandkids are going to know him. Believe me, if I've got anything to do with it, um, they're going to they're gonna know about Jimmy Buffett's music. And it dawned on me that I was probably the last person to come up on the on the uptake of his very first song, 
his first hit, his breakthrough thing that put him out there come Monday and that line about for the Labor Day weekend show. And he passed on Labor Day weekend. Uh. It's like it's like bookends. You know, it just and it, when I realized that it just hit me. I miss the guy. I mean, I it hurt. It was like I had lost a friend when I got a text that Jimmy Buffett had passed. I just, yeah. but he, yeah. that music is going to, you, you know, we kid about, Hey, you're going to be playing this in elevators in 50 years. You know, well, one, are they going to be elevators in 50 years? We might just teleport ourselves to wherever we want to go. But uh, yeah, I think you're going to be here and come Monday and Margaritaville and some other stuff in 50 years. I truly do. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's to Jimmy Buffett and to Man. all our parrot heads. I God tell you what, you, Jimmy. Thank you. And uh, let's all go look for that lost trigger of salt. That's it. Lost shaker of salt. Live your life. Forget your age. Embrace. Boom. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.